Stop music playing. Good choice. Hey, well played. Everybody, what's going on, and welcome to Fan Splash episode. Do you say 14? 14. 14. Holy on the cow. first take. <laughs> this is definitely a, the first take. I, is this the first time we've done two takes? What? Probably. Yeah. Okay. Because we're getting serious. We're getting real. By the time we get to episode 20, it's going to be a two month production. So <laughs> look forward to that. It already is. <laughs> just because we don't edit our videos. Yeah. Um, so we have tons to talk about today, but for your conveniences, we're going to do our best to keep it under an hour to make it more watchable for you guys. And then also, uh, make sure you listen to us on SoundCloud if you don't have time to watch a video and that is soundcloud.com slash fan splash. Also follow us on Twitter at, uh, at the fan splash. And you can also now send us emails at the fan splash at gmail.com. So if you want us to answer some specific questions, maybe we can start doing mailbag, something like that. Let Our YouTube know. channel is also now called Fan Splash. Is yes, it not? we have a new YouTube channel. We have channel. a new YouTube channel, and we have our Facebook page is called the Fan Splash Network. Yes, Fan Splash the Network. Fan Splash so Network. Find us on there. And do you, do you still have it listed as a private group, though? I believe it's public, but I will double check okay. and make sure that you guys can join that. Um, for probably the next few videos, I'm going to be putting um, videos on both channels, give you guys a chance to transition and subscribe to our new channel, um, where we'll have lots of new contact and stuff. Um, what, what was I trying to say? New content, content. for you, um, including my review of Ghostbusters. So make sure to go over there and check it out. We're, We're going to try really hard to limit our reviews to, I would say, 15 minute max. Mm -hmm. uh, Five, 15 minutes. Um, spoiler freeze. That's not counting like big events like Suicide Squad that we've been you know, sure. anticipating very highly. Yeah. Um, Star Trek, hate to be unfair to Star Trek, but we're uh, kind of trying to reel it in with something as big and as mighty as Star Trek. Which we saw last night. Last night, woohoo. High five, separately. <laughs> uh, this is actually my first experience going to the movie by myself. And then also our podcast we're going to try to restrict to about an hour. Right. Uh, that's just to make it more friendly for you guys who want to listen. And I can't wait for, we have some really cool news this week, because Comic-Con just kicked off yesterday, but next week I can guarantee it's going to be huge because we'll be covering the rest of this weekend next week. Um, lots of things to come out. So the big winner last night was Marvel TV News or Marvel Netflix News. And then we've gotten our first uh, official Wonder Woman poster from Warner Brothers. And then uh, Suicide Squad's really amping up their marketing because it comes out in two weeks, I think. I think so, two weeks. Um, like you said, super excited for that. As you can see with our mini, what do you call those figures? Uh, I think they're the metal die cast. Metal die cast. I don't know what exactly they're called. But we are very excited. Um, so excited. Am I missing anything? My hype is <laughs> out of this world. I remember being unbelievably excited for Batman vs. Superman. And that didn't turn out well. But I was very excited for Civil War, and that turned out pretty well. And I was very excited for Civil Apocalypse. Civil War was better than I ever thought it would be. Oh, Civil War was great. And I actually had lower expectations for Apocalypse than I did coming out of it. So it was it actually turned out better than I thought it was going to be. Right. So. I got uh, two out of three pleasant surprises, and then one not-so-pleasant disappointment. <laughs> okay, yeah. Um... But anyway, well, we, got no, the we have, edition, we have, yeah, we have our, we have our hopes for, um, for Suicide Squad. We're very excited for it. So look forward to that. All right. It's coming out soon. But for now, let's get to it. Star Trek Beyond. Did we like it? I loved it. I thought it was great. Yeah, it was, it was really good. Uh, the visually stunning, although I saw it in 3D. The only so. CGI that was distracting was like, no spoilers, but like the beginning. There's an alien race in the beginning that's just like, it didn't look as good as some of the other stuff. It looks like CGI. It looked like the Ragnars or whatever they're called in Star Wars, the big tentacle things that rolled around, which was also distracting. There's certain like CGI things that's like, most of it's really good, but like some characters are just like, it's kind of like Warcraft itself. 
It's hard when you have so much practical effects. Like, thank you, J.J. Abrams, for doing both Star Wars and the first two Star Trek movies with a lot of practical effects and trimming down on the CGI when you could, because uh, I think it really adds to the environment. I don't think that I don't think they were that bad. They weren't. I didn't think they were bad. I well, think I just okay. Maybe the CGI wasn't that bad, but it stands out to me in something where there's not a lot of CGI characters. Like we haven't been introduced to many CGI characters in the Star Trek films. Sure. Everything else looked perfect, though. Amazing. Yeah, yeah. it looked great. Storyline had a few classic tropes, but none that It wasn't aren't... overly original. No. In fact, it was uh, a pretty pre-told story, um, and I wouldn't even say in like a Star Trek sense, but those tropes weren't not unique to Star Trek. Do you know sure. what I mean? Yeah. Or, sorry, they weren't separate from star trek right you know when you think of this typical star trek episode you kind of see like like a two-parter or something going into like this uh storyline but definitely definitely not something like completely original what did we think of the new characters i like them um we have sophia butella from kingsman the secret service as jayla and she was great you remember in kingsman right blade lakes yeah 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 Yeah. um she might have been my favorite part of this movie but there's i mean you see a little bit in the trailers but there's amazing chemistry between her and scotty and i think um help me why can't i get his name scotty simon Simon Pegg. Pegg. okay yeah i don't know why that took so long um I think this is the best Simon Pegg's been in the entire franchise. Well, he wrote the I know movie, he wrote it. So I know he wrote it. I could see. I was like, hey, he's giving himself a little uh, screen time. He definitely is. Uh, but it was good. Um, there was a lot of really good things in there. Now, this is not a shot at the movie. It's just an opinion that I feel the need to express. Out of the three, this is actually my least favorite. But I don't have any of them rated under an eight. Uh... I don't think anybody agrees with me. Did I like it better than Into Darkness? Did you like Into Darkness? I liked Into Darkness. Okay, a lot of people out there, guys, don't like Into Darkness. I've never heard that until you said that, though. Most Re- people I know that saw Into Darkness. Darylin hates it. And she's a she's a tricky. All she's, the all the tricky people. All you the know tricky. what's funny is is is. God, I feel horrible saying it now. I always considered myself to be a Trekkie. But, you know, not to the degree, I guess, that like a real Trek. I I guess not like a Trekkie Trekkie. You're a Trekkabee. Huh? You're a Trekkabee. Trekkabee, what's that? Trek wannabe. Oh. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I guess so, fuck. <laughs> um, hey, more, more of a next generation Trekkie, but I guess Trekkies are... I'm an, I'm an Abrams, of, I'm an Abrams uh, Trekkie. Is that a thing? Dude, the first movie was really, 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 really good. Literally, the only thing not great about the first one was Banna as Nero. But it was a character movie. It was more about the heroes than the villain, and that was done very well. And I think the villain was done pretty well. Anyway. Um, so, talking about this movie. And then we have Crawl, played by Idris Alba. And... I'm counting on it. Looting it. I was, yeah, I was, I was, uh, ad- actually admiring some of, like, the acting that he was doing. Sure. You know, like, picking up English and stuff like that. Right. No spoilers. But, oh, dude, I got like, Star Trek Monopoly right there. Anyway. Uh... <laughs> it's there, guys. In spirit, Star Trek Monopoly. <laughs> was he a threat? Uh, where does he rank on the new Star Trek films as far as villains go? As far as villains, I want to honestly say that like it felt throughout the movie that his motives were a little ill-placed. Yeah. It felt like he had a very thin motive and that he just had the wrong opinion and that he was going to the ends of the earth over like... S- it honestly felt like it was something that he really hadn't put a lot of thought into. He felt like a drama king, whereas... Khan, I understood. Yeah. Um, trying to think what other what other things. Um, well, even Nero. Yeah, Nero. Nero was understandable as well. So they paid. Um, let's see. Can I say this without spoiling? 
Yeah, you know, I might as well, because he's dead and everybody knows it. They did a cool send-off for Leonard Nimoy. I yes. Think, and a good tribute. And I like that Leonard Nimoy has kind of been, not huge in the second one, but a main thread line through all three of them. As and being. the entire movie was dedicated to Anton. Yeah. Right? Um, Anton Yelchin, rest in peace. I think he was like 28? 27. 27. It's, it's, it's terrible. And... They've they officially confirmed a few days ago they will not be recasting Chekhov. They shouldn't. No. I mean, you you can write them off. There's enough characters there. Um, it's not like Fast and Furious. You don't Paul have to Walker kill died. him, but no. But you can like write him off. He went to another mission, another ship. There's a million things that you could do. Whereas you know, Fast and Furious was a little more difficult. Sure. Um, and they actually they were able to finish the whole production before it happened too. So, I mean, as far as tragedies go, that's probably the best case scenario production-wise. I always hate thinking about that, but I, you, I do, do too. you do think things like that, like in, like, Mockingjay Part 2, like, how was Philip Seymour Hoffman going to appear in that movie? Or right. are you just going to completely not have his character in it? Right. He does make an appearance in the movie. Yeah. So, um, <clears throat> anyway, so can, that's, that's sad. Can we... It is sad. Because he was stellar in this movie he did a great job weak dirt weak dirt that's like my favorite part of the first one every time he's trying to get yeah, that coded he did, he did a good job he did a good job check off are you breaking my ship study captain <laughs> uh um yeah he was he was well i say perfect but then again i never watched star trek so i loved his character um for my first star trek exposure uh can we talk about i think there was a pretty steady build in tension throughout the movie from beginning to end, it was building, you know. It didn't, like, go up and down and up and down. It was constantly going, and the last 30 minutes was Oh, awesome. it was, yeah. There was, there was like, a small dip, like, at the beginning. It was just a little, you know, like, steady, but it was always, like, my interest was peaked from the jump. This movie and has a pretty breakneck speed. Yeah, well, because it's, the, the plot point starts, and then it goes. Right. It's just, like... I don't want to say Mad Max where it immediately starts. Sure. But uh there's about a 20 minute period and everything after that's just There's like go, there's go, go, go. yeah, there's very small parts where it just, you know, it's an it's 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 an event. Right. So, it's a spectacle. Yeah. And it was it was very very cool. It's a nice story. Yeah. Yeah. Um and I think everybody came back and full This might be my favorite We've gotten of Spock. His character has developed the longer he's been exposed to like his human counterparts and things like that in the in the group. We get to see a little more comedic moments from Spock. You do see some comic relief even from Spock, and great like character um, building moments. Playing like off when the people bones. people are grouped off together. Yeah, and you get to see them um, interact, which I think is really good. I think all the characters played very well off of each other. Right. Um, but. Now, you know, Spock, he does, when you, th when you think he's making, like, he got to remember he's a Vulcan, so, like, some some pr progresses son over the Son of Winona others, Ryder. You know, what? I said son of Winona Ryder. What is that? Is that something I missed on? Do you know who Winona Ryder is? Yeah. yeah she's the mom in the first Star Trek. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Yeah, Sorry. Anyway, you know, there's, you know, he's he picks up on, like, um... Oh, oh no, you no, now you done it. That's okay, guys. Anyways, continue. He picks up on some like uh manner of speeches, expressions and stuff like that. Sure. That like you would have think like he would have come across by now. Right. But uh it's it's funny, it's fun. You know, it is so. it is good. And um I love Bones. Bones I've always liked, but he was hilarious in this movie. Um Scotty was great. Montgomery Scotty. I started looking at Carl Urban in the way that you kind of do and I was I was looking at him and the way that he plays his character and I was thinking I wouldn't be pissed if he ended up as Wolverine but I would rather it be someone else entirely but I wouldn't be like it's not completely unfair. He's got good gruff comedic timing. Sure. Yeah. Um but I don't have, if you have some other thoughts, let me, let me know. I don't have a whole lot. I just want to recommend it. 
to everyone if you're a Star Trek fan, if you're a general sci-fi fan. Uh, the only thing I would say is probably watch one and two. I guess you don't need to, but it would make this a better film. All all the all the ship, the the technology, the choreography, the CGI, all that Pr- stuff. So many the practical character, effects. The char- yeah, the the just the character makeup, all that stuff. The design, even like just it's background all, people. It's oh amazing. yeah, no, it's great. Except for there's one literal like Roswell alien character. And, yeah, and you're and like, it, and then it's like, why? Come on. Anyway, <laughs> um, I think that was just as a goof. Sure. You know, um, or gag rather. But all that stuff, it's visually there. It, it is so much there. And the story is good. The story, you know, it, it felt more grounded to classical Star Trek. That's what I heard. Um, Darylin was saying that and a lot of people are saying that this movie feels the most Star Trek-y out of the three. For sure. I would completely agree with that. And that's why I want to lean more towards this rather than, or I almost called it Wrath of Khan, Into Darkness. I think you can, anybody that I talk to, I would not argue against them. If they said any one of the three was their favorite. I, I see points for any of them. I I don't think any of them are bad movies. I think this, this uh, series this has, has been done... This a really great trilogy. Has, 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 has done really well. Well, there's going to be a fourth one. Uh, and Chris Hemsworth is coming back. I, are they going to have like Nero or like some other time warp thing? Again? I have no idea, but... Um, no, I, there, yeah, there's probably like a time travel. And I think it's... I see. This is why I don't want to call myself a Trekkie. I think it's Star Trek Four is the voyage home where they go back in time. Come on, you can't have the second movie be a con movie and then the fourth, fourth movie, movie be, be the. A, well, it wouldn't be like the voyage home. It's not gonna, you know. But it, um, it would. They do time travel. It's it's a it's a constant thing in Star Trek. They do it quite a bit in the next generation. I, I okay. Well then. We'll see. That would be interesting. They get sucked into a... Anyway, uh, I would give this probably a... Oh, man. I want to say like a... I want to lean towards an 8, but I want to keep it down at like a 7. You know? Uh, like a 7, 7.9, 7.8. So... If we do decimals. Yeah. Um, I might just give it like an, like an 8 just to say... Sure, just a soft eight. Yeah, just... Yeah, there you go. A soft eight. Well, I, I understand exactly where your rating is because... For the first seventy five percent of this movie, I'm like, I'm probably gonna give this a seven and a half because I'm enjoying myself a decent amount, but I feel like come a week later I'm not gonna remember much of this movie. And then the last half hour hits and I was like, you know, this is this is awesome. The last half hour was super good. So I I, I yeah, I'm remembering a lot of stuff that I can't get into with spoilers that is just so Star Trekky that it's it's very much Star Trek. Yeah. There's, there's, come on, there's hand-to-hand combat with Kirk. You know, you see a lot of that. Well, at least it's all this. Ugh. But it's... Ugh. <laughs> Fighting giant it's, lizard it's, people. It's really, it's, it's, it's a good movie. Yeah. Yeah, so... Are we doing two um, eight out of tens? You know what it's, yeah, I would agree. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Eight out of ten. We usually agree, I, I feel like. Pretty close. Um, We're usually not, like, drastically off on things. I'm almost excited for the day that we are. We go see a movie and we come back and one of us just loved it and the other one's like, that was trash. I think we had different ones on Apocalypse. That's, I think that's true. I think I gave it like a seven and a half or something. You gave it like an uh, eight and a half or, I don't know. Eight and a half, nine, yeah. yeah. Um, Go see Star Trek though. I will tell you, I will tell you right now in Star Trek, there is not one point in the movie that I was like, come on. Or like, get on with it. Or like, okay, I get it. I was like. I was thoroughly entertained the entire film. Was that the lighting, or were you just flexing? What? Oh, okay, so you obviously weren't doing it. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean, these? <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, no, there's no there's no dips in quality in the movie. It's steadily great, so go see it for sure. I was going to say I can't wait for a character to show up in Star Trek Four, but that would be spoilers. Anyways... Go, go see the damn movie. That huh. person's going to have to wear a uniform. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, God. That Starfleet jacket that Captain Kirk wears. Oh, yeah. That is awesome. I want that. I want that jacket. That is so cool. It's like one of the coolest jackets I've ever seen. And it's a Starfleet jacket. That's. I mean, it's awesome. 
All right, well, hopefully right. coming up. Now we'll into see. our main topics for the day. Finished up the review. Um, what do you want to start out with first? Do you want to do um, some of the Comic-Con stuff, Suicide Squad? Sure, but you're going to have to lead into it. Okay, that's fine. Let's start off with Comic-Con. So, Marvel Netflix dropped a nuke on us. We're expecting some Luke Cage news, because that's the next Marvel Netflix thing to come out. What we did not expect is a, I guess it would be a teaser, because it didn't show a whole lot, but a Luke Cage teaser, an Iron Fist teaser, and also a, more like a Defenders announcement trailer. Didn't show any footage. I did not see the Luke Cage teaser. What? I didn't see the That is literally the best thing out of the whole Marvel Netflix. That's okay. <sighs> I'm going to have to tell you what happened. Um, and then also, I don't know if you saw it, but there's like a 15 second Daredevil Season 3 announcement video too. I did not see the video, but I read an article. Did you? <laughs> Sweet. I most certainly did. Awesome. Um, the, the Season 3 Daredevil one was basically just, it was like a Hell's Kitchen subway station. And it was like, there's like a one, two, three number on it. And like the one flickered and the two flickered and the three flickered. And then it was like Daredevil season three. I was like, clearly. Yeah. Why do they have to tease us with shit like that? Like, why can't it just steadily come out like everything else? You know what I mean? Yeah, I don't know. Like, oh, I have to wait. <laughs> Fuck. Like Sherlock. Good God. What is the deal with that shit? Doctor Who too is like. A year and a half between releases. I understand that that might take a little longer to film and stuff like that, but like... But you think Doctor Who takes longer to film than Game of Thrones? <clears throat> Maybe longer to develop. No. Um, but, so, we got all those things. Um, I'm going to start off talking about my favorite thing that was shown off, which was the Luke Cage trailer... Uh, you've actually watched all of Jessica Jones and got a little more exposure to Luke Cage than I have. Which, if you, did, if you didn't watch all of Jessica Jones, I don't see why you'd like Luke Cage. Because I love Luke Cage as a character. Okay, classically, like, sure, but the live-action Luke Cage, this is my first exposure to Luke Cage, and he... I did not like... Mike Coulter? Huh? Mike Coulter? No, I didn't like their, you know, Arrowverse romance. Oh, you yeah. Know? Well, um, I didn't care for it either, but Jessica uh, Jones seemingly is not really going to be in um, Luke Cage. Well, that and you know that if you watched Jessica Jones to the end, where his character develops much better, and so does hers, and so does Kilgrave, but... I'm a terrible person. It's like, I would even almost recommend watching like the last, how many episodes are there? 14? I think it's 13. 13? 13? Yeah. Watching the last six episodes and not the rest of the show. Well, that's anyway. like what I have left. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, just fucking bite the bullet and watch it. I gotta, I gotta get caught fuck, up. Dude? I gotta get caught up on Preacher and things and, yeah. Uh, but the Luke Cage trailer, it's basically barely more than a fight scene. And Luke Cage, he puts his hood up and he walks into this... Well, you see him, he walks over to a car. And he takes a car door and he rips it off the car. And then he pushes a door in with it. And these guys are shooting at him and he's holding the door up. And then he beats a couple people with it and he wraps the car door around somebody and then, like, throws them down the hallway. Damn. And then he's... It's so badass. He's unstoppable. He's just walking bulletproof. He grabs a guy by the back, throws him up to the wall, and then he drops, and he's just kicking everyone's ass. And I'm like, yeah! Marvel hallway scenes! Because um, we got gotten two great ones with Daredevil. One that led to a staircase scene. Um, it looks pretty cool. I don't know a lot about Luke Cage. I know what his abilities are and in the comics how he got them. He was like wrongfully imprisoned and experimented on or something like that. But That's where he develops his powers, yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that looks good. Iron Fist shows literally nothing, hardly. It's, they show Finn Jones, which is the actor who was the, the gay Tyrell. What's his name? Loris. Loris, yes. Loris. He is Loris from Game of Thrones, Loris Tyrell. Uh, he's got a full beard and he's wearing like, he looks homeless pretty much. He's walking barefooted. 
Um, and they do like a little flashbacks of his childhood or whatever. And then he like hits a wall and it like blows a hole open in a wall and then it's like Iron Fist. That's about all you got from there. So looking forward to Marvel Netflix continuing. I've been pretty uh, entertained and now we've enjoy. only seen two other shows from Marvel Netflix. That would be Daredevil and Jessica Jones. Daredevil obviously having two seasons, but with the Punisher in yes. there, which will spin off from. This will actually be. It's not like Arrow in the sense that two shows spin off of it, right? Right. And then the Flash, and another show spins off of that. It's kind of like. Jessica Jones was designed to spin Luke Cage off, and then Daredevil was made with the or Daredevil season two was made with the intent to make a Punisher series. If he was well received, if yes. he was well received. So, I don't think they were shoehorned in there. I think um, don't classically uh, Matt Murdock and Frank Castle have uh, lots of history, lots of uh, involvement. Yes, same together. with Luke Cage and, and Jessica obviously Jones. Obviously, Luke Cage and Jessica Jones, and that continues because Luke Cage and Iron Fist are best friends. Well, we still have the Defenders. We got a lot of character development to go in the MCU with these characters. Yes. But I think that, like, man, Netflix is just has done the best job of superhero shows out of any of the shows I've seen. I think... I would argue that The Flash is... The Flash more, is the most fun comic, and, well, yeah. and, and more fun, more comic booky, and more well-written in, like, a big story sense. I'd say Daredevil and like Jessica Jones are the better drama pieces based off of comic books, and then Flash is the better straight up like seventies comic book show. For sure. Yeah. And I fully appreciate, I very much appreciate that we get a down to earth vigilante level universe. Netflix Marvel cinematic universe. We got the fucking big, you know, heroes and stuff like this, but then we got... But they're not catching burglars. Maybe Spider-Man, but, like, they're too big for that. But it's funny, is they're tr they're the ones saving the world, and you get some grit in, like, Captain America movies, you get a little grit, but, I mean, ultimately, it's... They want to sell toys to children. Sure. And the Netflix shows show Wilson Fisk murdering someone by bashing his head in with the car door that's gonna just you know, remain in my head forever the character of the punisher who's just a brutal assassin you know there's there's just a lot murking of, people down a hallway in prison there's blood and murder and just it's 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 i fully appreciate that there are characters that that can intertwine with the mc universe that you that you can't be a child to watch right you have to be an adult well the appreciate. comics were kind of like that too a lot of the daredevil punisher Jessica Jones, all, a lot of those comics are dark. Like, a lot of Punisher comics say Max on it. And anything that's a Marvel Max comic is, like, an R-rated comic. Sure. That means they can nudity, blood, whatever they want to put in there, they can. And that's good. That you don't get Spider-Man Max comics. Like, that doesn't happen. No, but bring him into Hell's Kitchen to fight Fisk. <sighs> Please. Anyway... Iron Fist, Defenders, Luke Cage, we're excited for all that. Yeah, I mean, we knew all these things were coming, except for Daredevil Season 3. That hadn't been confirmed. What I had heard was there was going to be, obviously, a, a Season 3 of Daredevil, but we would get the Defenders before we got it. I'm still and, under that impression. And I heard that we would get the Defenders before we got Jessica Jones Season 2, which is two years between Jessica Jones, between seasons. That's a little ludicrous. But Jessica Jones will be in the Defenders, so it's not like a real two years. But can she have, like, is there any way that they could just make a short season, like a five-episode Season 2, like minisodes or something, that, like, would just, like, play the character in? Because there's, there's, some, there's some absent... Story the movies there. fill the gap in. Yeah, I know, I know. But it's it's crazy. Look what Marvel's doing. They're doing two to three movies a year, three in 2017, and then two shows a year. No other studio's doing anything like that. Well, if they wouldn't focus so much on fucking Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., then... Agent Carter, and, and then they're gonna they're trying to do spinoffs of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. I'm like, stop, let it die. Please. Oh, yeah, and by the way, everybody... You prematurely made a spinoff show... Before, like, net, like the Netflix stuff, that's where it's at. Yeah. Let Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. die, please. <laughs> S.H.I.E.L.D. is dead anyway. Um, like, right? Agents of nothing. Yeah. Ha. God. 
Um, but just so you guys know, obviously, um, Johnny Blaze is the original Ghost Rider. There have been other incarnations of Ghost Rider as the years have gone on. One of the most recent Ghost Riders is now being interpreted into the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. show. Tyler's very excited about it, as you can see. Nobody's going to watch it. Uh, and I, I'm pissed because I feel like this is lowering our chances of getting characters like Ghost Rider, Blade, and other stuff in the Netflix universe. Why are they... Dude, that's literally a waste of Ghost Rider. Is it just because he's like terribly received when it came to like the... The two Nicolas Cage movies that they okay, made with them? But they fixed Daredevil, so fix Ghost Rider. What I'm saying... So- Ooh, could they make a series with Ghost Rider? That's what I'm talking about. But They need to do um the the, the darker, mythical version of Marvel, which is Ghost Rider. And who would be perfect and play. to play it? Norman Norman Reedus! Norman Reedus, please! <laughs> please! Yeah. Oh my god, how perfect would it be, though? Come have, on! Rally up about something that have, matters. Have Negan kill uh, Daryl and then... Because Dar- <laughs> Okay, so... If you watch Walking Dead, spoilers, but uh, Daryl is a creative character. He's not in the comics. So, um, Ghost Rider is in the comics. Ghost Rider in the, is in the comics. Uh, Daryl, I believe, I could be totally wrong, but Daryl is the sum of like multiple characters kind of like converged into one. Um, so, spoiler alert for the next 30 seconds. So, skip 30 seconds ahead, if not. When my hands go down. Okay. Just kidding, they're down. <laughs> Negan is a character played by Jeffrey Dean Morgan that is just introduced in the last episode of the most recent season. So they left it at a cliffhanger of who they're supposed to kill. In the comics, it's supposed to be Glenn. But they've teased Glenn's death like twice with this. What they've done is they developed every character in like the last four episodes of the season like more than they've been developed previously to where you think that it could be basically anybody besides Carl or Rick right. can, can be taken by Negan. So Coral. Coral. Uh, so if they, if they would kill Daryl Dixon, if Negan would kill Daryl Dixon, then Norman Reedus would be freed up to play Ghost Rider in a series. Spoiler alert is over. So you should know when you die on Walking Dead... You join Marvel Netflix, John. Oh, yeah, John Bernthal is in The Walking Dead. Uh, spoiler alert, he dies you, very You're early. not a good enough man, Rick. I'm a better man than you ever were, Rick. He, he develops into the person that Rick becomes a little too quickly, and because of that, he gets, like, other, like, psychoses. You know, he, like, sees that, like, all the other characters are a little soft with it, but he also gets pretty rapey hmm. with like uh, Daryl's family. I don't know. I don't know if you saw season season one. I watched six episodes. Remember? You watched the first six episodes, so you saw the one where they go into the uh, CDC. That's literally the one I kept watching over and over again. I couldn't get past it. Oh uh, well. Anyway, um, so you know he obviously. It's uh What? Killed. He dies. Um but then he goes on to play the Punisher and he does a fucking awesome job. He's yeah. so great. He's great. You know, um, I think we were talking about this a little bit. Uh John Bernthal was being interviewed and he said what you saw because they were talking about that they're gonna do a Punisher show. He said what you saw, even though they called him Punisher, was still Frank Castle. He's like the Punisher's still coming. Which, like, fuck, the dude, if full... he's still Frank Castle, he's got some more brutality to get yeah, into. That's basically what he was hinting at, is, like, he still has an edge to drop off of. Dude, he's pretty fucking cool. <laughs> he's he's, I think it's... I think it's really good. I, I think he... I still like, overall, the Thomas Jane movie better. That was a great movie. I don't know why people poo-poo it. I've never heard anybody say anything bad about it. It I, still I... lives up as one of the best... Marvel. It's one of the best action movies I've ever seen. It's a pretty good interpretation of Punisher. Yeah. He he gets people mentally and physically like throughout that movie. But I think he's got like a little too John Bernthal is just a straight killer and kind of like his humanity has been taken from him so he lacks it. Yeah. Frank or sorry, uh Thomas, Thomas James Frank Castle 
still had a a humanity to him. So. Yeah. He had the great character moments with his apartment mates. Sure. Things. Absolutely. Right. Um, so, moving past Marvel Netflix? Sure. All right. So now we're going on to, not a whole lot to talk about here, but the first official image of Wonder Woman went up. Um, I'll probably include it somewhere in this area of the screen. And uh, it's a pretty simple but colorful shot. And it says, was it? Right here. Right there? Right in that spot? Right right here. Grace, power, wisdom, and wonder, I think are the four. It says on the bottom, bottom of there. Uh, she looks good. It looks like a good costume. Yeah, the only thing I would change is the lasso could have been glowing. Highlight the lasso, but it's no, very simplistic. No, it's gotta be dark and broody. <laughs> it's gotta be serious. Is she with you? Do you bleed? I thought she was with you. Yeah. What? <laughs> but we had sex. <laughs> <laughs> I stabbed you first. Okay. <laughs> with my dick. <laughs> Um, if you guys haven't, please watch um, Bad Man. Ooh, what's his name? What's the guy's name that plays him? I don't remember. Any other day, I would know. No, it's on know. College Humor, though, right? Yep, it's College yeah. Humor, Batman, Dark Knight Rises videos. It'll come to me later. Um, so yeah, check that poster out. Uh, apparently, it's all over Comic Con. Tells you nothing. She's literally got like clouds in the background, so there's not a lot of takeaway from the poster. But we are looking forward to Wonder Woman. I'm looking forward to it. Okay. Yeah, sure. Um, I'm looking forward to the Flash in I, Justice League more than anything. Right. I feel like we're going to get a Wonder Woman trailer by the end of Comic Con. We have to. Doesn't it come out before Justice League? Yeah. Yeah, it comes out around the Doctor Strange. After, after Suicide Squad, Wonder Woman's the next movie. So, trailer. Where is the trailer? It's got to be. The, the, one, uh, the Warner Brothers panel hasn't really happened yet. They just released a poster, but we haven't had the Warner Brothers. But panel. have they been waiting for Comic Con to release a trailer? Because we've got Suicide Squad trailers for like a year and a half. Right. Um, they had a little bit of Wonder Woman footage on the CW special. Did you see that? Uh, it was like forty. It was forty seconds of movie footage. Was this the inside the Justice League thing? Yeah. Where is was it the first one where we heard that Flash would be playing Barry Allen? I or so. was it the... S- it was the one that Kevin Smith hosted. I don't know. With Jeff Johns. Um, anyways, we could look that up too and I could show it to you. So, Wonder Woman, looking forward to that. Speaking of Suicide Squad, they have not left like the Twitter sphere or like people's mouths at all for like the last four months. But even so, they're ramping up their advertising. We are now getting character spotlights for Joker, Harley Quinn... Deadshot, Enchantress, Amanda Waller, uh, and a whole plethora of TV spots. Literally, with only, a little bit more Batman footage too. The only thing I don't think is going to be is, or I mean, sorry, the only stupid thing I'm feeling about this Joker is damage. That's my only problem. Like, I literally do dig the tattoos. The damage ones too on the nose for me. But there's in that they have a Joker special spot, and he's talking to somebody kind of mocking them and he has his he has his hand like this and he's got the smile across the back of his hand so it's like smiling for him what are you looking at just like a spot on her tit anyway um i'm, I'm, just, I'm just thumbing uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sure there is figures tit real quick i was just because re- i remember hers was something stupid it's daddy's little monster you yeah know, i don't i think that's stupid too um, it's not as stupid as damage on his forehead. She's got property of Joker on somewhere. It's on the back of her jacket. Yeah. yeah. She's got a, a necklace that says Puddin' on it. Um, those two characters are almost like a giant joke. But I guess that's the point. Yeah, they're jesters. Yeah. So. And they're... Out of any characters, they can get away the most with being self-aware. It's not like Killer Croc could get Cannibal tattooed on his head. We'd be like... Damage is just a retarded thing to put on some. It's like trying to. It's it's very Twilighty, like yes. selling a fucking teen. Box I'm shitty. damaged. <laughs> High school is such a serious thing. These problems matter. That's what it sounds like to me. It sounds like they're trying to sell extra shit at Hot Topic or something. Because yeah, li- I like all like all the tattoos I've meaning those smiles and ha 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 and the jester skull on his chest and even like the ones that are like shitty. 
You know, yeah. like they were like blatant shitty tattoos. As but they add to his personality. And I'm pretty sure his grills, like everyone's like, Oh, why would he get grills? I think they're replacement teeth. Yeah. I'm pretty sure Batman and the brass knuckles that he has on his suit punches. Knocked his, teeth. his fucking teeth yeah. out quite a few times. Yeah. yeah. Um which would is pretty realistic. Um no, I don't think it's stupid, and I think that, you know, he's got to be a little fucking flashy to be as crazy as he is. Oh, and, his purple uh, Lamborghini? Yeah, I think they kind of go a little hand-in-hand hand a little bit. Yeah, he's, right. he's a showboat. Well, look at American Psycho. You've seen American Psycho? Yeah. How much did, like, being, like, like having the best at something matter to him, you know? He oh. wanted the best business card. Mm -hmm. You know, when somebody presented a better business card to him, he's like, <laughs> you know it, it like that kind of stuff kind of matters I guess materially all oh, that chit chat's gonna get your heart <laughs> there are some things that I, I I hope that the delivery is much better in like the full spectrum I've things. liked almost every line that's come out of the Joker I have too but I, for I'm... some reason like the delivery is even fine on them like as they're brought out in the trailer or played in the trailer However, I feel like they still have that element to him. It's like, is this cheap? You know, is, is this cheap dialogue? Is this cheap acting? Is this uh sure? I just still I love when he's got Ike Barinholtz though in his hand, and he's like, I "Can't wait you to show you my new toy." That's it's funny because that's actually one of the parts that I appreciate about the trailer. Him just smacking his face like that, yeah, and I'm um, like. That's, I mean, that's that's good. Every time he laughs, quality. it's I can tell that he's submerged into the character pretty well. He's haunting. He's what really did he afraid. do that was like way out of line? Uh, Jared Leto uh, oh, with the rest of the several cat. things. Um, he apparently sent a used condom to one of his um, co-stars. He sent Margot Robbie a rat in a box. He sent Will Smith a box of bullets. Um, I forgot what he sent Viola Davis, but he literally sent all the castmates, all these like nasty gag gifts for the most part. And then people were saying that the people that played his henchmen, he would ask them to like follow him around the set, like in costume. And he was just walking around as the Joker with his henchmen and like not letting people talk to him. <laughs> I was like, whatever you gotta do, man. I don't break character until I do the DVD commentary. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the dude playing the dude. Just just guy guy the dude. dude. That's pretty fucking funny. Okay, so let's talk about these spots because I want to okay. go into a little bit of detail. Um, so we really get to see how maniacal and creepy uh, the Joker is. We get to see a couple more laughs. We get to see where that uh, laugh in the previous trailer comes from. The ah. You know, the squeak laugh? It's when he's laying down in the giant right, right. thing of all the knives and guns. and yep. um, Somebody analyzed that shot. There's a disassembled piano. There's baby clothes. And, like, a bunch of other things. I'm like, so weird. That's crazy. He's really weird. Uh, but there's just, there's so many parts about this movie that make me think that it... Like, I would I would assume without looking at a rating that it was rated on. You know what I mean? Sure. Yeah. Um, I don't How blame. brutal can he get without going right at all? Do you think we're going to get a Suicide Squad Ultimate Edition? No. No. Well, we would have known by now. We already knew about Batman vs. Superman. We didn't know about the Ultimate Edition until after it came out in theaters. Uh, we knew that 30 minutes were cut from it, didn't we? Yes, but we didn't know it was going to be rated R. Okay. Well, I mean, maybe. I don't know. I don't um, know why they would do that again, make that mistake. But anyway. Well, because it gives us two options. Obviously, where you make all your money is in the theater, so you want that version to be PG-13, but maybe there's an R-rated version people would like to see or prefer to see, and that's what you mean. one of the things you put on a DVD. It's cheaper to have two releases on DVD than it is to have two releases in theaters. Right? I don't know. Okay. Um... The Harley Quinn one was really cool. Showed her in the elevator, kind of similar Captain America type scenes. If it was just one person came in there, kicked somebody's ass in the elevator. I believe those are Enchantress goons. Like, they've been created by her, because they kind of look similar. Before we get started, does yeah. anyone want to get out? Yeah. 
It's nothing personal, Cap. Feels kind of personal. <laughs> uh, Winter Soldier's a great movie. Great costume. But, yeah, it is an awesome costume. costume. Um, we get to see... I'm Will Smith! <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's got some great lines. I like that... It feels like there's a battle for control of the squad between Deadshot and Rick Flag. And I kind of I kind of like that. Like Rick Flag's calling the shots and Deadshot really doesn't like him. He's like, you just threatened me? He just threatened me. Watch yourself. And uh, they, they, I feel like they're going to constantly be at odds throughout the um, movie. I see that. And I also like, he's like, you know, I'm a hitman, right? I don't really save people. That uh, seems very in character of Deadshot. For sure. And then we got to see the first clip from the movie, which introduced us to Enchantress, which is June Moon, and she got possessed by a evil spirit that apparently has been around for thousands of years. Really cool transformation. You guys have to watch the, the clip. They premiered on Jimmy Kimmel, because everything comic book related premieres on Jimmy Kimmel. Civil War trailer, Batman vs. Superman trailer, it's all Jimmy Kimmel. Um... But she has her hand, if you can see, her hand's on this desk, and it's zoomed in on her hand. And when she transforms, it's like this black hand comes through her hand and flips it's over. It's one of the coolest things I've ever seen. It's weird. It's, it's simplistic, but really, really cool. It's very cool. And it's creepy for a uh, you know typical action movie. It's not a horror movie, but they make her like a horror character. They are making the Joker into a horror character as well. He's frightening. He is very frightening. And think of like all the people that think that he's gonna be stupid and this is a stupid joker and he's stupid. He I'm looking back and like rest in peace, Heath Ledger, you were amazing, you were sure. great at everything that you did, and your portrayal as the Joker was one of my favorites, but even that Joker does not like get on like the the like human level psychotic that, that you even see in just the trailers of this one. Right. I think between you know. the three Jokers that we've had, well, this one being the third, well, not counting Cesar Romero, obviously, but he seems the most unhinged. Like, Jack Nicholson was... He was, he was crazy. He was a new Joker, though. Yeah. Um, he had just become the Joker. Right. Um, Heath Ledger... Think about Heath Ledger. I thought he was perfectly sane. He He's, he had a sane agenda. He was he was a little detached. Sure. But he was mentally only, ill, but the only, oh, for sure, but the only like difference that like you the only like really weird like jokery like separation thing that I saw mm -hmm. in him was that do you ever really get like a clear idea of what exactly he wants? Anarchy. Other a, than anarchy. In a general sense, no, not in really. In a general sense. So he's a little difficult to pinpoint, but the... I don't know, man. I feel like you could just you could just see it all. Like, just crazy. In, like, every sense of the, I don't want this guy to capture me and live. With Jared Leto. Yeah, no, I, I completely uh, agree with you. And he seems very purposeful, yeah. direct... Maniacal. Ike Barinholtz? Probably gonna die. Uh, probably pretty brutally. Yeah, probably, probably horrible. very slowly. And that scene... And I think we're gonna see Harley Quinn become... Or Harleen Quinzel become Harley Quinn. Um, they show in one of the early trailers Joker strapping her down to a table when she's still a psychiatrist. And then he's got the two, like, electroshock things. Like, I'm just gonna hurt you really, really bad. And I'm like, that's probably gonna be pretty intense. What if that's, like, the end of the scene? Like, it's him with those, and she's strapped down, and then it cuts to present day. And then you have Harley Quinn. And you oh, and they him. already showed everything. Nope. That's not going to happen, because we see her fall into the the vat. The Maybe acid. they'll cut away after you hear screams or something. Yeah, the acid vat. Then... They show her fall into the acid vat, and then Joker swan dives, which is one of my favorite shots of the trailer. You know what I'm talking about? The chemical bat? Yeah, bat. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, she falls into it, and then he jumps in, and he goes like, Whee! <laughs> um, I'm just, I'm very, very, very excited. It's funny that we almost consistently, like, every time... Batman is probably the most consistent franchise that we get Yeah. when it comes to superhero movies, and we consistently get a Batman, we consistently get a Joker. 
I was super excited for Batfleck. Yeah. Like, very, very excited for Batfleck. And I'm even more excited for uh, fucking Jared Leto as the Joker. Yeah. And I'm so uh, glad we have Harley Quinn. Just oh, yeah. Add, the cinematic the... debut of Harley Quinn. Um, Will Smith is Deadshot. Um, Growing on me a lot. He is. I mean, you can't, like, Will Smith obviously picks his roles pretty selectively. You know, he sure. goes, he's, look at his IMDb. Look, look at some people's IMDb's. They've been around for four years, and they have like over a hundred things on his. He or on theirs, he's got like thirty credits to his name. He's very selective. Sure. So, and and when I think back to him, I haven't seen a few of his most recent ones, but I Am Legend, Wild Wild West, you know, Men in Black, they're all very good. I'm entertained by all three Men in Black in movies. Day, yeah. Men in Black Three was. Probably cinematic best. debut of Killer Croc. Well, cinematic debut of a lot of them. Has Deadshot been in before? Arrow. Not a movie. Is that cinematic? It's in live action. Okay. Who plays him in Arrow? What's that guy's name? I've seen I, him in something. Before. Oh, I really, really don't know the actor. No. Oh, I love the... Uh, speaking of Deadshot, I love the um, interaction between him and Ike Barinholtz. When he's like, dinner Floyd, he's like, one of my friends call me Floyd. He's like, you don't have any friends. And they talk about, and he hands him, he's like, what is this? He's like, it's loaf. It's got oh, yeah. toenails and everything <laughs> yeah, I grow him. It's, it's loaf. <laughs> he's like, when, yeah, I, when I get out of here, I'm going to rain down on you. And he's like, do you just threaten an officer? Do something. <laughs> uh, yeah, and do you know it's funny? Because this is the one that I was least uh, excited for. Yeah. I'm actually kind of getting a little excited for some Killer Croc. Bro, I've seen a couple things where he like rips his shirt off. He's just this giant, massive... I wish they had the rest of them on here, you know? Katana, Boomerang. And Rick Flag. Uh, that's... Boomerang's on my top spot, too. I'm really excited to see Jai Courtney as Captain Boomerang. these guys are too big to, like, kind of, like, go with them, right? They're just a little big. Yeah. Titty big. Okay, so... We could get, like... Do we? I don't know. Oh, um, I want to talk about the Amanda Waller spot a little bit. I thought that was pretty cool. Um, her interaction with Rick Flag. If you ever saw Amanda Waller in the Justice League cartoon or the Assault on... You still haven't seen the Assault on Arkham animated movie, have you? That's not on Netflix, is it? No. No. Damn. That's like a really good Suicide Squad movie. Uh, and just seeing Amanda Waller in multiple incarnations, Viola Davis has nailed it. Like, just really? her delivery, how cold she is, but also how intelligent she is and how you can tell that she's thought everything through and she's also willing to do anything to get something, acro- like, done. Is it Rick Flagg that says, they warned me about you, but I didn't, didn't believe in the stories and nobody does. Nobody does. Nobody yeah. does. That's very that, Amanda Waller. I, 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 like, in that, I'm like, whatever, dude, anyone could just drop that bitch at any time, yeah. like, if they really tried... But then I kind of, like, started thinking about, like, dude, there are some fucking people out there that are pretty fucking sketchy, that have some pretty fucking... Power? Yeah, yeah. pretty fucking enormous power. Yeah. Um, not gonna name any names. Not gonna name any names. <laughs> but, I was gonna go... Either way, you can go either anything. way. Go either I wasn't way. gonna say anything at all. I was gonna keep my mouth shut. Oh. Um, <laughs> you're right. You're right. Regardless of what you want to say, uh, you don't know what I'm gonna say because I'm keeping my mouth shut. Well, you're probably um, right. But yes, she's very frightening. She's very scary. Uh, so, yeah, but I, I wouldn't want to fuck with her. Definitely not. I I think she's a bitch. Well, she is a bitch, but she's the best bitch. Like I don't know, man. Um, I guess when you think, because she knows I, who Batman is. Okay, so in Arrow, mm-hmm. they make you sympathize a little bit too much with Lachlan. So I don't like Amanda Waller in. Is Arrow. it Lawton? It's Lawton, right? L A W T O N. Oh yeah, yeah. Floyd Lawton. Yeah. Lawton, Lawton. I keep wanting to say Lachlan because it's well, more. To be fair, I've seen in the trailers that they are going to show Deadshot's daughter in this, and that's always been like his motivation. Okay, I'm, I'm understanding of that. I'm just saying that like Arrow is such a drama based show sure that it, and it's it's like if fucking general hospital had a mad budget 
and like you know like i'm just saying it's very drama based they make you sympathize a little too much with deadshot in it and make him mad oh is it waller or weller Waller. It's Waller, yeah. Because she's the him, wall. Yeah. They call her the wall. Amanda Waller come off as too much of a bitch. I you hate know? her Nero. Well, she's a fucking bitch. Well, she's even a bitch to... Do? No. Well, yeah, but I mean... uh, God damn. Oliver? Oliver, yeah. Oliver Queen. And he's not even a criminal. No. He's basically, like, held captive by her. Yeah. And forced to do her bidding... Against his will for no reason or no fault of his own. Yeah. It's just... So she's kind of a huge fucking bitch. In this she's, Suicide Squad, I don't know the circumstances. Yeah, I don't know the circumstances of this, but it, you, you kind of see that, like, I'm an official and these are fucking criminals. Oh, yeah, I like that. You know? He's, he's like, like, we need soldiers, not these, like, the scum, you know? Yeah, but, I mean, it's like, they're, these are bad guys. They fucked up. They've all killed people. Mm-hmm. So... Uh, I'm glad you have Batman up there while you say that too, because he definitely has. <laughs> has has this one? Has he killed people? Yet? Did he kill people with his hands or only with the Batmobile? Um. Because in the flashback, he for sure kills people, but was he killing people in the movie? Well, definitely with the Batmobile. The Batmobile. I, I think for sure uh, they died, but it's. Uh, it doesn't show them die. It's an only... Okay, implied. there was people in the car. He put them on a grappling hook, dragged them upside down, and flipped them into another car full of people. Eight people dead. But this is a comic book movie <laughs> where, you know, then, killer crocs exist. You can't... You can suspend your reality that a crocodile person exists, but you can't believe that eight people survived two cars being smashed together. People survive from their parachutes not... Def- Deploying, the intent, falling to the their intent death. was death, and that fight scene, the really like the best part of the whole movie. It's debatable if all those people are alive or not. Okay, asshole with the Russian dude with the flamethrower. He shot his flamethrower tank. That dude's dead. Blew him up. Yeah. Eh, I don't know <laughs> if he would die. It's <laughs> comic books, man. I'm pretty sure he's dead. It's it's just funny that like. The whole thing was, oh, Superman killed all those people when he was fighting Zod. Just, like, flying through those buildings and, like, he's a brutal bitch. But as long as I do it within my sight of my bare hands <laughs> or something, you it's haven't, okay. You still haven't seen Ultimate Edition, right? No. Oh, dude, please watch that so we can talk about it. Cool. More anyway. So. Yes. Squad. Um, we got the Amanda Waller spot. Uh, Rick Flag, Harley Quinn, Dead Shot. We think Enchantress is the villain of the movie. Okay, we've gotten so much footage, and we don't really know how this movie's going to play out. I mean, we know as much now as we did the first trailer, right? This, we haven't really learned tra- anything. For Enchantress to be the the villain of the movie, I think, and we're just now seeing her, I think she's like the final card that they pull... And they're after the Joker. Because the Joker's got a lot of screen time in the trailers. He and he has to have pretty heavy screen time for him to have all the different costumes that they show. Why would they Hear send Harley out. Quinn after the Joker? Bait. Mm-hmm. Did you not think that? No. Well, I, I thought Joker was just somebody that, like, in I, all my opinions of this movie and preconceived notions and S or. The way I think the movie's gonna play out, all of that's based off of the animated movie that look, I saw. Look how many, look how many elements there are in it, though. Joker's a free man. He's getting the most. He has to have a lot of screen time because he's got a lot of costumes. This movie's um, set up almost exactly the same as the animated movie. Okay, so then maybe if someone had seen the animated movie, they might want to throw him for a loop. Who does is is Enchantress the villain in that movie? Uh, no. I'm trying to remember exactly what happened originally. They're trying to get something from the Riddler, and they have to break into Arkham Asylum. And then while breaking into Arkham Asylum, the Joker gets loose, and then they have to try to stop him, and then it just becomes a mad dash of different squad members trying to get away, and So they're trying to stop the loose. Joker in there, though. Yes. So why would that not be the case in this one? They're trying to stop the Joker. He's a free man. They have to save the world. When they show Enchantress, they say, 
like to introduce you to, you know, or whatever it says, you know, right. that's been around. So Amanda Waller, at least in one point, was in control of her. Maybe at the beginning, maybe that's like the beginning of the movie when they show her, and it's kind of like a Robocop thing when it's like, drop the gun, you have 15 seconds to comply, he drops the gun, and it's like, you have 10 seconds, he's like, what, I dropped the fucking gun, what do I do? And then it shoots him, Yeah. and then they, I don't know where I was going with that, but, um, <laughs> where was I going with that? Anyway, she's gone, and they don't have control over the day, um... So they have to retrieve her with the Suicide Squad, maybe? I'm very curious what the first like hour of this movie is going to be like. Obviously the whole movie, but... How I... long is the movie supposed to be? Please be long. I... Of all the movies... It's got to be at least two hours. Of all the movies that I want to have a length to them, it's this one. Sure. Which, um, well, it they... seems every fight scene in the movie, it seems to be against those zombified, enchanted, like, demon dudes. Which would be like minions of Enchantress. That's what I would think. So I think maybe, I don't, she might be throughout the movie. I don't know. And I love that I don't know. I know about as much going into this movie as I did about Star Wars. Going into The Force Awakens. Oh, God. I wish. I really like The Force Awakens. But I... No, because now I can be excited for the next one. Sure, there's there's lots of things they can still do. Hopefully they explore the Knights of Ren more. That's something I really want to know. But that's going on a complete side rant. I think that's all of our topics that we had for today, unless there's other things that you need, wanted to cover. No, I'm I'm just getting excited that like we hit a bump in the road with Batman vs Superman, but uh, according to you, Ultimate Edition is a much better movie. A full point. In, huh? A full point better. Back up to your original seven or to an eight? Well, a seven out of ten is a good rating. A I, great rating. Maybe maybe a seven and a half. Maybe a seven. I don't know. The last seven. Third... And a, if if you're if you're thinking maybe seven and a half, that's good. Yeah. This movie's getting shit reviews. Um, it was just. It's just the it's, last it's thirty minutes is unredeemable. And that's talking about the whole doomsday thing. Pretty much from Martha on, is unredeemable, to me. I don't think that that was bad, though. I think that... I think it could have do been done much, 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 much better, but you still get Batman doing all the Batman shit that we never see him do. And then... Doomsday himself, man, like... They had to use him. They had to... Do things, you know? I'm just saying, like... What? Good what defense. Else? Good defense. Um, they had to do things. There are things they had to do to get out of the way to make way for more fun and interesting and favorable characters. Sure. And bringing in the Justice League, you got a lot of ground to cover. Could we not have done Doomsday in a Superman sequel? Yes, but this is the Superman sequel. You understand that, right? You know what I mean. <laughs> like a Superman solo movie sequel. Yes. No, okay, so I'm on the side that it definitely could have been done much better than it was. Mm -hmm. There are different approaches that you could have taken. Mm -hmm. I don't think it was a shit movie. I think mm -hmm. there was a lot about the movie that was... Um, good other than i don't I'm, I'm still not a fan of jesse eisenberg as Lex Luthor. that's okay if we start talking about bvs we'll talk for another hour anyway my initial point was i'm so happy that we could finally get excited for dc like making like a full universe cinematically you know um, it's supposed to start with green lantern right i'm kind of glad that it didn't oh, i'm super that glad green that it lantern. didn't yeah um i wouldn't have been completely opposed to it if it had started with that Green Lantern, we wouldn't have two different universes. Like, the Marvel Universe and the DC Universe are, like, polar opposite. That Green Lantern movie was almost like a Marvel movie. But just not a good Marvel movie. It, it wasn't bad, it was just the villain was stupid. Yeah, the Far Cloud. Well, both villains were yeah. stupid. Yeah. That's what I was going to say. Um, Hector Hammond and Parallax. Yeah, the Elephant Man and the Far Cloud. It was really bad. So, um, the one that looked like a toe. Huh? The guy that looked like a toe. <laughs> so, 
anyway, like classically, we got the Dark Knight trilogy, which I'm glad they made that. Um, I wish that Heath Ledger wouldn't have died and they could have like continued with their plans, but we got that. Um, but we've we've never gone into like a Justice League before, and we're finally getting that, and that's finally happening for us, and we're even getting we Suicide are getting. Squad. That's so weird that Suicide Squad's the third movie in the DC franchise. I'm happy, dude. Look at all the villains they get to introduce. How far did we get movie. before we got Guardians? Like, Suicide Squad is the equivalent of Guardians of the Galaxy as far as obscure comics go. Like, nobody knew about Suicide Squad. Well, Arrow, but like before that, nobody knew about Suicide Squad. It's a great way to introduce Joker and Harley Quinn. Or how about, like, a crap ton of batman villains the only well, that's what i'm saying like a, a bunch of it like the only villain in that the whole suicide squad group i believe that is not a batman villain is actually captain boomerang he's a flash villain captain boomerang captain boomerang sounds, sounds like a flash name yeah uh so yeah and i oh also heard this is not confirmed but rumored that and this, to me, it would be the perfect movie. And this is what I wanted. Well, I want Red Hood, but this is the other thing that could happen for me. The Batman solo movie might take place almost completely in Arkham Asylum. And isn't it supposed to be mostly an original story? Yeah. I don't know how much I like that. I kind of like it a lot. I'm not opposed to it. It's just that there are so many stories to tell and so many interpretations that you can do. And they're obviously, like... I don't know, man. Like, look at like look at like when like Civil War comes out. How excited we were that they're doing a Civil War story. How excited for Red Skull we were in Captain America. Yeah. You know how excited for <clears throat> all sorts of different things. You know, Spider Man. I don't know, man. I just like there's there's things about doing stories that like these characters already have a, an existence. You know, in a way. Well, to me, this would be them doing basically the storyline of the Arkham Asylum video game. Which is dope. But that's not an original story. Well, none of these. You just said none of these are original stories. Yeah. They're not. They're uh, These characters have stories told. These characters have, like, an existed story. So, that so you're saying you want new stories have. of all these characters? No. Uh, I'm saying these characters have a lifeline yeah. of a, or a timeline in their life of all these things that have happened to them for Batman, a Batman movie to come out of a new unique story that classically hasn't happened to Batman. So that's what you want. No, I don't want that. I don't like that. I don't know that I appreciate that. Is okay. that not making sense to you? Well, it, yeah, I think it's, it's first sound like you're like, um, you didn't like, I don't know. I, I didn't like the idea that it's going to be an original story. I it's, don't like that idea. Oh. Well, I was saying if they do an Arkham Asylum, it'd be taking a lot from that existing storyline, probably. But it can't because it's mostly an original story. Well, they did say mostly. They also can say whatever the hell they want and change their mind because they've done that a million times. And when they did say that, they were only pending the script, right? So. Nothing's done on that movie. There's, there's still a lot to be done. Anyway, yes, very excited for all the Marvel Netflix stuff. Very excited for DC to finally come into fruition. Doctor I Strange! Still, Doctor coming. Strange is coming out. Yes, I am so excited for the rest of, you know, um, at least the foreseeable future of the Marvel Cinematic Universe and the foreseeable future of DC. And I am very excited for... All of it, I'm continuing to watch even the television series that CW has for the DC stuff. We're getting Justice League Part 2 and Infinity War Part 1 in the same year. 2017? 18. 2018? Justice League Part 1 is 2017, but Part Infinity 2 is Infinity War Part 1 is 2018? Mm -hmm. We have three Marvel movies in 2017. Spider-Man, Spider Thor, Thor, Guardians. Guardians. Yeah. I'm okay with that. Mm -hmm. I'm very okay with that. Spider-Man. Um, literally, I've seen set photos for Guardians and Spider-Man have been coming out. I don't think they've started production on Thor yet. Yeah, well. Uh, I'm okay with Thor because I'm okay with Hulk. 
and you said it's going to take place more in space, right? Yeah, more more of the realms, and also Loki and <sighs> I Valkyrie. Could, I could I could do or take without Loki at this point. Like I like Loki, but um, it's just been played out in three movies. So I understand it's a huge part of Thor, and it's like kind of like, but he's mm, yeah. It's just like Bucky. I could go a Captain America movie without Bucky. Oh, I couldn't. I love the Buckers. Yeah. Buckers? <laughs> <laughs> I love my Buckers. Oh my god. I don't know, man. I think he's going to be in Black Machine. Panther. I'm fucking tired of War Machine. That I'm tired of. I was tired of him in Iron Man too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm Don Cheadle now. Oh god. <laughs> oh god. Oh, all over. I'm done. I'm done. Um... All right, uh, guys, that's it. So that's the end of Hand Splash episode, episode fourteen. Well, you got double whammy in here. You got a full fucking um, podcast, and you got a review of Star Trek. So tell your friends and everybody you know. Uh, tell your mom. I want you to tell your friends about me. Tell your mom, your dad, your sister, your brother, your girlfriend, your boyfriend, your dog, your cat. Your uh, if you happen to have any friends at all, tell them. Uh, your science teacher, uh, your parole officer, all those people. Your cellmate. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Basically any type of person I've left out. Uh, if you know any lizard people, go ahead and tell them. Any Daleks. Uh, Daleks. There you go. Um, Please don't exterminate our channel. And um, follow us on several things. Let us list them. Make sure to follow us on Twitter if you have a Twitter and you are joining that Twitter sphere. And you can find us at the Fan Splash. You can also find us on SoundCloud at soundcloud.com slash Fan Splash. We also have a Facebook group. This is not a like page. This is a group. Yes, so you can comment, add to it, in, discuss. You can be a huge part of this if you want to. Absolutely. Whatever part of it you want to be. Um, and that would be the Fan Splash Network. Yep. Um, and you can also, if you're friends with any of us on Facebook, contact us directly and we will show you where to go. You can email us at fansplash at, or is it the fansplash? The fansplash. The fansplash. Fan splash is like the shortening. It's the fan splash, like the splash of the fan. It's the fan splash podcast. So, okay. The email is the fan splash at, at gmail.com. Gmail and I will have all of these things down in here so that you can read them, go back to them, revert to and them. And then we've gone from the Think we've Now moved. channel. There's. Uh, there's still the Think Now channel, but we won't be posting on there anymore, will we? No, not really. Uh, it will all be on the Fan Splash channel. Check out my YouTube. Ghostbusters review. It's the first thing on the YouTube Fan Splash channel. That's not... This is mine. I drank both of these, and I didn't pee. All right, thank you, everybody. Like, <laughs> comment, and subscribe. May the film be with you. See you next time. Until next time. Until next time.